Hey folks, welcome to Puzzle Spoilers. This is my absolute beginner's guide to solving the Rubik's Cube. I'm going to explain things as simply as possible in six steps. This is not the most efficient way to solve the cube, but it's the perfect first tutorial for absolute beginners. In this tutorial, you'll learn four very useful algorithms for moving pieces around the cube. Algorithms are nothing to be afraid of. In fact, they are essential in solving your first cube. The algorithms range in length from four to eight moves and are easy to learn. Don't try to memorize these at first. I'm gonna overlay all of the move sequences over the video as we go through the steps. Now you're probably wondering if you need to watch this complete video. Of course, I'd recommend watching the introduction and the basics on the algorithms. You should then watch step one in its entirety, pause the video, and then try to solve step one on your own cube several times before moving on to step two. Watching this one step at a time and taking breaks in between to practice will make this a lot easier. Now I'm guessing you're here because your Rubik's cube is scrambled and looks something like this. There are over 43 quintillion different ways a Rubik's cube can be arranged. That's 43 with 18 zeros behind it. You will never be able to solve the cube just by making random turns or by trying to solve each face separately, as most beginners intuitively try at first. By following this tutorial, you'll eventually be able to solve the cube in about four or five minutes very reliably. Here are the four algorithms. Take a screenshot or a photo so that you can have an easy reference when practicing. I'll also overlay these again on screen as we progress through the solve. If you commit to daily practice, you will naturally memorize these algorithms and develop muscle memory. Also, be sure to check the description below for handy timestamps to quickly skip to the steps that you want to review. Let me now explain some basic algorithm terminology. Algorithms are move sequences that move pieces around the cube in very specific ways. They are written out as letters, and these letters represent 90 degree rotations of the cube. The letter F stands for the front face and tells us to rotate the front face 90 degrees clockwise. The letter U stands for the up face and tells us to rotate the up face 90 degrees clockwise. The letter D stands for the down face and tells us to rotate the down face 90 degrees clockwise. The letter R stands for the right face and tells us to rotate the right face 90 degrees clockwise. And the letter L stands for the left face and tells us to rotate the left face 90 degrees clockwise. None of the algorithms we use today will require a B rotation, but that would be the back face. Now, if you see a lowercase i after any of the letters, that means to make an inverted or counterclockwise rotation instead of a clockwise rotation. For example, this would be an F inverted or front inverted rotation. That's a counterclockwise rotation. This would be an up inverted rotation or a counterclockwise rotation of the up face. This would be a down inverted rotation or a counterclockwise rotation of the down face. This would be a right inverted rotation or a counterclockwise rotation of the right face. And this would be a left inverted rotation or a counterclockwise rotation of the left face. Going forward, whenever I reference an algorithm, I'll show you how to set up and hold the cube before you have to initiate that algorithm. All right, let's get our bearings here and take a look at the different parts of a cube. Each cube consists of six centers. Each one of those centers is a different color. Eight corner pieces. Each one of those corners is three different colors and 12 edge pieces. Each one of those edge pieces is two different colors. The center colors define the color that we're looking to assemble on that particular face. For example, this is the white center and we're aiming to fill this face with nine white pieces. On most cubes, white is opposite of yellow, blue is opposite of green, and red is opposite of orange. No matter what movements you make on the cube, you will notice that the centers do not move in relation to each other. This stability of the centers will guide you throughout the duration of the solve. One thing to note before we get started, I will be using several cubes that have some stickers removed in order to more clearly demonstrate strategies and algorithms. You don't need to remove the stickers on your cube, but if you're struggling to advance through this video, it could be helpful to match the simplified stickering on my demonstration cubes. You also wanna make sure your cube moves fairly smoothly. If you have an older cube and it's very difficult to turn just one side, this is gonna be a very difficult situation. 
I'll put some links below to some affordable cubes that I would recommend. You'll be making hundreds and thousands of turns as you learn the cube, so we want to make sure that it's easy to make those turns. All right, we're ready to get started. Let's get started with step one, solving the white cross. Now many tutorials online will claim that this is an intuitive step, meaning you don't need any special instruction to solve it. When I was first learning, this was a difficult first step for me, so I don't want to assume that this is an easy step. I'm going to go through some of the common problems that you might encounter and some of the setup moves that will help you solve the white cross. Now we've picked white as our cross layer because it's easy to pick out among all the other colors, but you could solve the cube forming your cross on any face using any color. For the purposes of this tutorial, you'll definitely want to use white as your first cross layer. It'll make it a lot easier to follow along. Going forward, I will be describing this top layer sometimes as the white layer, this middle layer, sometimes as the center layer, and the bottom layer, sometimes as the yellow layer. If you'd like, you can match the stickering to your cube and take some of the stickers off so that you just have the white cross. You'll probably want an extra spare set of stickers if you decide to do that. The stickers that you peel off might become damaged. Or you can start with an empty blank cube like I did and just add stickers as you go. This is the completed cross. I'm going to go ahead and scramble it and we'll go through some of the common situations you're going to encounter. I think it's good for beginners to be systematic about solving the white cross, and that system will begin with finding all of the white edge pieces that are on the top layer. Now you might have 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 white edge pieces already in the top layer. In this case, we have two white edge pieces that are already in the top layer right here and right here. We got lucky here, we already have one piece solved, and whenever we have a solved edge piece, we want to keep that piece intact, always touching that white center piece. Now the second white edge piece on the top layer is right here, and we're going to solve that piece next. In order to solve this edge piece, we need to make some rotations. Now I like to think of this middle layer as a entry layer to the top layer. Any white edge piece in the middle layer can be brought up to the top layer with just one 90 degree turn. So let's bring this white edge piece into the middle layer and we can do that by making a 90 degree turn just like that. You can now see that this white edge piece is only one rotation from being correctly oriented on the top layer. But we want to remember to keep this piece which is already solved intact and in order to do that we need to rotate the top layer 90 degrees we can now bring this white edge piece that's in the middle layer up to the top layer and we now have two solved white edge pieces. After you solve an edge piece, it's good to start from the top again, look to see if there's any other unsolved white pieces. We can see that there's no remaining unsolved white edge pieces in the top layer. So let's move on to the middle layer at this point. We see that there is one unsolved white edge piece right there. And this piece is primed, it's ready to go. We just need to make one 90 degree movement to get it up to the top layer. But remember, we don't wanna kick out the piece that is already solved. So whenever we don't wanna kick a piece out, we need to make a rotation of the top layer. So now these two pieces are safe while we make this rotation and have lined up three edge pieces now. All right, let's start from the top. We're gonna to check the top layer again for any unsolved white edge pieces, I don't see any. Let's check the middle layer, there's none there. So now we move down to the bottom layer and our final white edge piece is right here. Now any white edge piece on the bottom layer can be put into the middle layer by making just one 90 degree turn, just like that. But remember, we don't wanna disturb anything that's already solved. So in order to do that, we just need to rotate the top layer like that now we can move this white edge piece into the center layer. Our piece is now primed to go onto the top layer, but we can't make this move because we're gonna kick out what we've already solved. This piece right there will be kicked out. So again, let's rotate our top layer 90 degrees, and that will allow us now to bring our final white edge piece into the top layer. 
This step will actually become very intuitive after kind of going through this a few times and analyzing what's going wrong, what's working. One of the main takeaways is that we need to make sure to rotate our top layer when necessary and keep a close eye on what's solved and we want to make sure to never disturb anything that's already solved. So it might seem like we're done with step one, we have the white cross, but there's one more component to the white cross. The white cross is only truly solved when it looks like this cube on the right. And this is my second demonstration cube. We're going to put this one away for now and focus on this cube now. This is the final full solved state of the white cross. Let me show you a few alignment situations and I'll show you how to fix them. So you've solved the initial step in solving the cross, but when you look at the corresponding center pieces, we don't see any that line up appropriately here. So we've got, for example, this white and orange edge piece. This is supposed to match up to an orange center piece. And all four of the edge pieces are supposed to line up appropriately with their matching center piece. So it's possible to have no matching color pairs, and that happens to be my situation here. You could also have just one matching color pair, just two matching color pairs, or the last option is all four are paired up, and that's our solved position. Let's start with this possibility where you have no matching color pairs. In this situation, you just need to make one rotation of the top layer, and you should be able to match up at least one color pair somewhere on the cube, and mine happens to be red here. And in order to solve the rest, let's just pick an unmatched pair here. So in order to solve an unmatched pair, we need to make a few movements, and so we find the piece that we're trying to move. In this case, it's this white and green edge piece. We need to move it over to this other side to match with the green center over here. So we need to bring the white and green edge piece to the bottom layer by making two 90 degree turns. It's now on the bottom layer. And now we can swing it around to match it up with the green center. Now we don't want it on the bottom layer, we want it on the top layer. So we need to make two more 90 degree turns. And now we have the green and the red solved. Now in making those moves, we kicked out the white and orange piece that was there previously. Now it's on the bottom layer. So now we can swing that around and to match it up with the orange center right there. But we don't want it on the bottom layer, we want it on the top layer. So we make two 90 degree turns to bring it back up. And again, we kicked out one of those wrong pieces. It was the white and blue piece, which is now on the bottom layer. Now we can swing the bottom layer around and line that up with the blue center piece. We don't want this piece on the bottom layer. We want it on the top. So just make two 90 degree turns and we have now fully solved our white cross. All right, let's move on to step two, which is inserting our white layer corner pieces. All right, here is the next demonstration cube. And all I've done here is added in all of the extra colors on the corners in the top white layer. And I'll rotate these around so you can see all the colors. We'll put our cross demonstration cube away for now and let's focus on solving the complete first layer. All right, here's the cube after a little bit of a scramble. Now keep in mind, we still have our intact cross and our edge pieces still match up with their corresponding center pieces all around. That's going to remain intact for the rest of the solve. The first thing we want to do is to see if we have any solved white corner pieces. And I can see here that we have one solved piece already and this would be the red, blue, and white piece. So we wanna make sure not to disturb this corner. Next, we wanna look for any white corner pieces that are in our bottom layer. And I can identify two here, and our other white piece is actually right here. Now, if all of your white corner pieces are in the top layer, you wanna pick one, an unsolved one, and bring it to this front right position, and you're gonna hold the cube like this, and we're gonna initiate our first algorithm here. That's going to be right inverted, down inverted, right, down. That algorithm keeps our cross intact, 
and it uses this front right column sort of as an elevator. In this case, it moved our corner piece from here to here. All right, let's pick any corner white piece that's in the bottom layer. I'm gonna pick this piece here. It's the white, green, and orange piece. We wanna rotate the bottom layer so that the corner piece is directly below where we want it to be. So let's check to see if this is the right spot. Here we have our white, green, orange piece. Does it need to go right here? And I can tell right away that it doesn't because this needs to be the white, green, red piece. So this is not the right spot for this corner piece. Let's move it below, directly below where it needs to go. And it happens to be in this position here. We want to move it up to this spot. And this spot will be the orange, white, and green piece. And that's this piece right here. So with this piece in the front right position, we're gonna perform that same algorithm as many times as we need to until this piece is correctly solved. Right inverted, down inverted, right down. All right, we move that piece into place, but it's not solved yet, so let's keep going. Right inverted, down inverted, right down. Okay, nothing yet. Right inverted, down inverted, right down. There we go, we have solved that corner. We just have two left to go. So again, let's look in the bottom layer for any white corner pieces. Here we have another one. And this one happens to be directly below where it needs to go. So with this correct piece in the bottom right part of the cube, we're gonna perform our algorithm, right inverted, down inverted, right down. It's not solved, so we'll keep going. Right inverted, down inverted, right down. Not solved yet, we'll keep going. Right inverted, down inverted, right down. And there we go. We've solved that corner piece. Let's solve the final corner. Now let's look in our bottom layer for the last remaining white piece. Here it is, it's the white, blue, and orange piece. Now it's not directly below where it needs to go. We've already solved that piece, the red, white, blue piece, and we don't wanna disturb it. So we need to move our bottom layer around, just 90 degrees there, and now it's below exactly where we need it to be, right here in the upper right. So with this piece in the lower right, we're gonna do our algorithm again. That's right inverted, down inverted, right, down. And there we go, we have fully solved the first layer. All right, let's move on to step three, which is placing the four middle layer edge pieces. Here is our next demonstration cube. All I've done here is added the additional stickers on the four edge pieces, which were empty on our previous cube. Let's now put this cube aside and we'll focus on this one here. When we're done with this step, we will have the complete two first layers fully solved. For the first two steps, we did have the white center face on top. For the rest of the solve, we're gonna turn the cube upside down so that now the yellow center layer is on top. I'll go ahead and put the yellow center sticker here so that we can maintain our bearings. All right, here we go. I've gone ahead and scrambled it and solved the first two steps already. So we do have the full complete first layer already solved. We have the yellow layer facing up and the white layer facing down. Now we're gonna focus exclusively on these four middle layer edge pieces. The first thing to do is to see if you already have any solved. And I can tell here that this piece right here, this middle layer edge piece is solved. This is the green and orange piece. It's great that this is solved already. We don't need to do anything. That will remain solved for the rest of our full cube solve. After we've looked for any edge pieces that are already solved, let's look for the remaining edge pieces. And we can identify those because they are edge pieces that do not have yellow on them. There will be four edge pieces that do have yellow and those belong on the top layer. And then the edge pieces that we're looking for do not have yellow, and those are the middle layer edge pieces. And first we wanna look in our top layer for any of those edge pieces that do not have yellow. And I see one right here, this is the green and red edge piece. Once you find the edge piece that you wanna solve on the top layer, you want to align it with the corresponding center color. Now most tutorials will show you two algorithms for this step. 
I've simplified it to just one algorithm. I think it's a little bit easier just to learn one, and then if you want, eventually you can learn the second algorithm. Basically, the algorithms are inverses of each other. One moves an edge piece to the right, the other algorithm moves that same edge piece to the left. I'm going to show you how to solve the cube just by using that right hand algorithm. So with our color pair here, red and red, we then want to identify which way we want that edge to go. If we want it to go to the right, which we do because this is the red and green piece and this would be the red and green position, we will perform the algorithm. With this piece in front and pointed towards you, we will perform this algorithm. Up, right, up inverted, right inverted, up inverted, front inverted, up, front. That algorithm moves the edge piece from this position to this position. Now I want to show you if you're in that same position, but instead of going to the right, you want your piece to go to the left. So in this situation, we have lined up our two colors there. We have this edge piece. This is a red and green edge piece which is lined up with the green center piece. But we don't want this to go to the right side like we did before. We now want this to go to the left side. In this case, we can still use that same algorithm, but instead of holding the cube with our color pair pointing towards us, we want it to be pointed to the right. We can then perform that algorithm again. Up, right, up inverted, right inverted, up inverted, front inverted, up, front. That was a setup move. It moved the edge piece from this position where it was previously lined up with the green and it flipped it and moved it to the other side of the cube over here. We can now align that same piece which is now just flipped. It now aligns with our red center piece. And now we do want this edge piece to go to the right this is the correct position for it. This is the red and green position. Here is our red and green edge piece. We'll be kicking out this edge piece. This piece is in the wrong position. This is the red and blue edge piece. So again, with this edge piece pointed towards us, we will perform the same algorithm. Up, right, up inverted, right inverted, up inverted, front inverted, up, front. And that has solved our edge piece. One thing to note here, you might be in this position where you don't have any edge pieces in your top layer. If that's the case, then you have edge pieces that are in the wrong positions in the middle layer. If that's the situation, that's okay. Just bring one of those wrong edges. So in this case, we know that this edge piece is in the wrong spot. It lines up with our blue piece here, but not with the red piece here. We know that this needs to be a blue and red edge piece. So with the wrong piece in this position, it's pointed towards us on the right side. We perform that same algorithm. Up, right, up inverted, right inverted, up inverted, front inverted, up, front. That algorithm kicked our edge piece to the top layer, and now we can solve it as I previously showed you. Once you've solved all of your edge pieces, your cube will look like this and your first two layers will be completely solved. All right, we're making good progress. Let's move on to step number four, which is solving our yellow cross. This is our new demonstration cube. You can compare it to the one we had previously. All I've done here is added the four remaining edge pieces to the top layer of the cube. We'll set this one aside. So again, we're gonna keep our yellow face on top as we solve this step. Let's go ahead and scramble it. All right, here we have three scrambled cubes. I've gone ahead and solved the first two layers, so we're just focusing on solving the yellow cross. There are three possible yellow patterns that you're gonna see on the top of the cube. One is this situation where we just have one yellow dot in the center. This is another pattern you'll see. This is the line. 
And finally, this is the angle. Now the other colors on top will be completely different. You're just focusing on recognizing those yellow patterns and they can be in any orientation. So it could look like that or that. Let's focus first on the dot pattern. We can hold the cube in any orientation. It doesn't matter. And we're gonna perform our third algorithm. That's front, right, up, right inverted, up inverted, front inverted. And after you do that algorithm, you could be in multiple different situations. You might have the angle, you might have the line, or you might have the full cross. Let's look at the angle pattern next. Whenever you see this angled pattern, you wanna put it in the upper left portion of the cube, just like that. And it doesn't matter which way it's oriented in relation to the bottom two layers. So you can rotate these bottom two layers any way you like. We just wanna make sure that this angle is in the top left portion of the upper layer, just like this. And when we perform the algorithm now, let's see what happens. That's front, right, up, right inverted, up inverted, front inverted. And that will always result in the line pattern. So it goes from the angle to the line every single time. And when we see the line pattern, we know that we're just one step away from getting our cross. We need to hold the line so that it's in this orientation. Again, it doesn't matter which way your bottom two layers are rotated. We're just looking for this line to be on the left to right orientation. Holding it like this, let's perform the algorithm again. That's front, right, up, right inverted, up inverted, front inverted. And there we go, we have our cross. Now let's see if our cross truly is solved. If we remember back to our white cross, it's not just that the white cross needs to be solved, we also need to match colors on the sides and those need to match the centers. So let's take this edge piece and loop it around so that we have a matching pair there. And then if we look at our other sides, unfortunately those do not match up. So we know that this is not a full solved yellow cross. I now wanna show you all the possible situations that you might be in once you have your yellow cross. You might get lucky and your yellow cross might already be solved completely, meaning you have your yellow cross on top and all of your edge pieces match up with their corresponding center pieces. One other possibility is that you have two matching edge and center pieces and the other two are not matching. And this situation might look a little bit different. If I rotate the top layer 90 degrees, we'll notice that we now have one matching edge to center and the other three are not matching. And this can also look a little bit differently even further. If we rotate one more time, we now have no matching edge to centers. All three of those possibilities are the same situation. I will be going over how to solve this particular variation first. And finally, you might be in a position where you have two matching edge to center pieces, but those pieces are opposite each other and not adjacent to each other like they were on this cube. You need to learn how to solve all three of these possible situations. They will come up in solves eventually for you. A lot of other tutorials online will introduce additional algorithms to fix these problems. We'll be using the same algorithm. You don't need to learn any additional algorithms. We'll be using the same algorithm that we were using to solve the initial step in solving the yellow cross. So you don't need to learn anything additional. Let's focus first here on the most difficult variation. In this case, we have two adjacent edge pieces matching their corresponding center pieces. And then the other two edge pieces do not match. You'll wanna orient the cube so that those two matching pieces are on the right side and the back side. In this orientation, we will perform our algorithm front, right, up, right inverted, up inverted, front inverted. Now we're back to our angle pattern and we're gonna do a slight modification at this point. 
we're going to rotate the top layer just 90 degrees clockwise so that we now have this angle kind of L looking pattern like that. And now we're gonna perform our algorithm again. That's front, right, up, right inverted, up inverted, front inverted. It might look like nothing happened, but we did make some subtle changes to the cube. Now we're gonna put it back to its original state, that angle position on the upper left portion of the cube. We're gonna perform our algorithm again. That's front, right, up, right inverted, up inverted, front inverted. We have our line, that's a good sign. Just one more algorithm to get to the full cross. That's front, right, up, right inverted, up inverted, front inverted. And there we go, we have our cross. We now have a slightly different situation where we have two matching edge and center pairs on opposite sides. And you might already be in this position when you're starting your solve, in which case you can jump in right at this point. So with those two matching pairs in the back and the front, we're gonna perform our algorithm again. That's front, right, up, right inverted, up inverted, front inverted. We've got our angle, so we're gonna perform our algorithm again. That's front, right, up, right inverted, up inverted, front inverted. And now we have our line. This is where we're making our final modification. We just need to rotate this line, this bar pattern, 180 degrees. So two 90 degree turns in either direction. Now we can perform our algorithm one more time. That's front, right, up, right inverted, up inverted, front inverted. And now all of our edge and center pairs are matching and our yellow cross is fully solved. Let's now move on to step five, which is solving the yellow corner pieces. As we can see here, we only have four pieces left to solve. Solving these yellow corners is actually split up into two parts. It'll be part five and part six. So what I've done here is added the extra stickers to the rest of the four corners. And now we do have a fully stickered Rubik's cube. Let's set this demonstration cube aside. Let's go ahead and scramble this cube and I'll solve the first four steps real quick. All right, we've done some scrambling. The first two layers are still solved. We have our yellow cross and all of our edge pieces match with our center pieces. The only thing scrambled here is our last remaining corner pieces on our top yellow layer. Now your corner pieces have three colors on them and that's how we're gonna know if that corner piece is in the correct spot or not. Your corner piece might not necessarily be oriented or twisted in the correct way. We just wanna make sure that that corner piece is in the correct spot and I'll show you what I mean. This corner position should be the red, green, and yellow piece. We can tell that this is not in the correct position because this is the red, blue, and yellow piece. So what you'll wanna do is go to each corner and see if it's in the correct spot or not. It might be the case that you have no corners in the correct spots. You might have one corner in the correct spot or all four of your corners will be in the correct spots. In my case here, I have no edge pieces that are in the correct spot. And don't be fooled by this piece right here. It might look like it's in the correct spot because we have this matching yellow piece, but this really should be the yellow, blue, and orange piece. But we actually have the yellow, orange, and green piece. This is in the wrong spot. So if you have no corner pieces in the correct spots, you can perform this algorithm number four. This is the last algorithm in our algorithm list. You can hold the cube in any orientation as long as this yellow layer is on top. We will perform up, right, up inverted, left inverted, up, right inverted, up inverted, left. After we perform that algorithm, we're gonna check all of our corners again to see if any are now in the correct spots. And I can see here that this corner piece is now in the correct spot and I can tell that because we have the yellow, green, red piece and 
we have the red, green, and yellow center pieces all around it. We know that this is the correct spot. Now once you have a corner piece that is in the correct spot, we want to hold it in this particular orientation. When looking at the yellow face, we want it to be in the lower right position here. Then we want to perform our algorithm again. That's up, right, up inverted, left inverted, up, right inverted, up inverted, left. And what that algorithm actually is doing, it's keeping this corner piece static, it keeps it safe, and then it cycles through the other three corner pieces. It moves them around. So after doing that algorithm once, let's check our other corner pieces to see if they're in the correct spot. And I can tell here that this one's definitely in the right spot. In fact, it's fully solved. Let's look at our other corner pieces. This one's also in the correct spot. This is the yellow, blue, orange piece. And we've got yellow, blue, and orange on the center pieces all around it. And finally, this also is in the correct corner position. All right, this cube is completed for step five. We're gonna move on to step six, and that will be our final step in solving the cube. So in step six, we're going to rotate any remaining corner pieces that do not have yellow on top. This last step can be a little bit scary. The cube looks a little bit scrambled at certain points, but stick with it. It's actually not too difficult. It's one of the easier steps. To begin this last step, we're gonna pick one corner piece that is not rotated or oriented correctly. We can tell that this corner piece is not oriented correctly. We don't have yellow on top. So what we need to do is keep this corner piece, again, in this lower right position. And we're gonna go back to algorithm number one. We already know this algorithm. Let's perform it. It's right inverted, down inverted, right, down. Now, it looks like we did a little bit of a scramble here, but we just need to continue doing that same algorithm until this corner piece is solved. Let's do it again. Right inverted, down inverted, right down. Let's do it again. Right inverted, down inverted, right down. And one more time. Right inverted, down inverted, right down. Make sure to complete that algorithm completely. Do not stop in the middle of it. We can tell here that our corner piece has been solved. This is our yellow, red, and green piece. Now we wanna keep everything static here, except for rotating the top yellow layer to another unsolved corner piece. We wanna put that piece in the same lower right position. Then we can perform that algorithm again as many times as we need to solve this corner piece. That's right inverted, down inverted, right down, right inverted, down inverted, right down, right inverted, down inverted, right down, right inverted, down inverted, right down. And there we go, we have solved that corner piece. We just have one final corner piece to solve. And again, keep everything static. Just move this top yellow layer so that the final corner piece is now again in this lower right position. We're going to perform right inverted, down inverted, right down, right inverted, down inverted, right down, right inverted, down inverted, right down, right inverted, down inverted, right down. And that piece has been successfully oriented. Now everything is correct. Our yellow layer is solved. And we just need to make a few final rotations on that top layer to match everything up. And our cube is completely solved. Congratulations. If you found this tutorial helpful, I'd appreciate a like. It'll help more people find this video. And if you have any questions or problems with your solve, go ahead and leave a comment or send me a message. I'll do my best to help you. You might consider subscribing as well. I post lots of mechanical puzzle videos and I'll be posting lots of twisty puzzles like this as well. That's it for today, folks. I'll see you on the next video.